Hello everyone. Welcome to JG Chemistry. Guys, today we are going to learn how to distinguish homotopic, enantiotopic and diastereotopic protons. As you can see, this is part 3. In the previous two videos, we have already learned how to find out the number of signals in proton NMR means how to find out distinguished type of protons and how to find out the structure determination based on proton NMR. So if you have not seen those video, you can find the link of those video in this description box of this video. And if you want me to prepare any video on particular topic, do let me know and write it in the comment section. I'll try to prepare it. So let's start. So let's say you have a molecule in which you have a germinal carbon, germinal group. What, what does it mean? That either the carbon which is having the two proton that is CH2 methylene group, the two protons are either homotopic, enantiotopic or diastereotopic. Means whether these two protons are going to give you a same signal or it is going to couple with each other and give you a different signal that we will find out or you may have instead of the two protons you may have the germinal dimethyl group so whether these two methyl groups are equivalent or non-equivalent that also we will see in this video so three possible relationships are there for the germinal groups either it may be homotopic enantiotopic or diastereotopic so we'll see what do you mean by each term here so first we will see homotopic so, what is homotopic and how to find out? Homotopic groups are always equivalent. Equivalent means they will not split each other and will give you a single NMR absorption. You will get only one signal for the homotopic groups. And how you find out whether it is homotopic or not, we can do the substitution test. So, let's say one example here. You have this example where the two groups are there. XX means the molecule is symmetric here. And we are talking about the CH2 which is having two proton. Let's say we represent it by HA and HB. So we will see the relationship between HA and HB whether it is homotopic, enantiotopic or diastereotopic by substitution test. So in first case we will substitute the HA by A let's say. And in the other case we will substitute the HB by A. And you can notice here, since the two Rx only here, the other groups, it is not a chiral center. The molecule is symmetrical and similar. Either you see this molecule or the other molecule, both are same, identical and non-chiral. Therefore, we can say the two protons are homotopic to each other and it is a symmetrical molecule. Let's say one example. In this example, we need to find out first the relationship between the two methyl group, which are germinal methyl group. Whether these two methyls are give you a separate signal or it is equivalent homotopic methyls. So you can notice here the molecule is symmetrical with respect to this center. Here you have CH2OH on the other side also CH2OH. So you can consider it both are XX group. So in that case, if you do the substitution, like we have done here, the two molecules which you will get is identical and so we can say the two methyls are identical or homotopic in nature. So the relationship, the two methyls are homotopic methyls and so it will give you one signal for 6H protons. There is no coupling between these two methyls so you will get the singlet. Enantiotopic. So again we will see, here again we can find the groups well, what does it mean? That you will get only one signal in the NMR spectrum if you place it in the chiral environment. Of course, if we are getting the enantiomer here, chiral center means you have the four different groups with respect to the carbon. So, it is the chiral center or chiral environment, but enantiotopic protons cannot be distinguished by using NMR and therefore you get only one signal. How to recognize that? It is again by doing the substitution test. But what is the difference between homotopic and enantiotopic proton types of molecule? In the previous case, the two were same XX means the molecule were symmetrical. But here you have two different groups. One is X, other is Y. So molecular is 
asymmetrical and we need to find out the relationship between HA and HB which is the methylene group. So again by substitution you replace the HA by A and again HB by A and you can notice the two are enantiomers and you have a chiral center here. All four groups are different. Since the two are enantiomers, the relationship between the two protons we can say it is enantiotopic protons and it is a non-chiral molecule right HA and HB all four groups are not different so it is the non-chiral molecule but the relationship between HA and HB it is enantiotopic. Let's take the same example here we will see the relationship between the two methane here you are present here right so this CH2 it, what is the relationship between the two protons with respect to this carbon. So if you notice and do the substitution test with respect to this carbon, uh, let's say we re uh, replace this hydrogen with any group A, let's say. So with respect to this carbon, you have a chiral center. You have four different groups. One is hydrogen, other is A and you have OH and you have a bigger group here, right? So it is a chiral center and if you have a chiral center and replace by the substitution test, you will get the enantiomers. So we can say the two protons are enantiotopic protons but you will get only one signal for these two protons as NMR is unable to distinguish it. So the next is diastereotopic protons. What are the characteristics? So here the groups are non-equivalent and if we say it is non-equivalent means it will have different values in NMR and you will get two signals for the respective groups. Either it is proton or methyl. So, we will get different chemical shift value as well and they are going to split each other by 2J coupling. Two bond coupling, they will split each other. Let's take this example again. But here we have, have a star mark here. What do you mean by that? That the... One of the group here is a having a chiral center. So Y star means this Y is having a chiral center to it. And we need to find out the relationship between HA and HB. Same, you can do the substitution test. You are getting the chiral center as well. You are generating a new chiral center in the or, uh, or original chiral molecule. So in the previous case, the molecule was was a chiral right but here in diastereotopic the molecule is already chiral and you are generating a new stereo center so we can say the two are diastereomers to each other and i'll tell you a trick which is very easy to distinguish and to identify that whether it is diastereomers or enantiomers so whenever a molecule is given or example is given to you and if you have a chiral center in that so you can say that the nearest carbon which is having two proton or two groups must be diastereotopic or the molecule is diastereomers to each other. Okay, so you just have to find out the chiral center and then we can say HA and HB are diastereotopic to each other. The condition is already a stereocenter is present in the molecule. So if you take this example, now you can see we have the same example but we have replaced here one of the hydrogen with methyl group. Now this carbon is already a stereocenter which is in your molecule, right? Four different groups, methyl, OH, hydrogen and a bigger group, this bigger group. So already a stereocenter is present in the molecule and then we need to find out the relationship between the two protons or you can say the two methyl groups, whether it is the same or it is diastereotopic in nature. So as we have seen that you should have the stereocenter if it is present in the molecule we can say that the two hydrogens are diastereotopic in nature. So you can easily identify or distinguish from homotopic as well because homotopic you have a symmetrical molecule but here we lost this symmetry so it cannot be homotopic. Again for enantiotopic the molecule was a chiral initially but here you have a chiral center. So only option left is with diastereotopic and so it is the diastereotopic protons and similarly now the two methyls became diastereotopic methyls. Earlier when the molecule was symmetrical the two methyls were homotopic to each other. 
So we can say now the two are diastereotropic because a stereocenter is present in the molecule. This is this trick is very good and very uh, effective in case of such kind of uh, examples you come across. We'll solve few problems here. So this is very first and simple problem ethyl chloride. If you see this molecule, we can easily say that there are two signals in NMR, one for CH2 and other is for CH3. Now, if they ask you the relationship between these two protons, let's say represent A, A single prime. So, what is the relationship for H, A and H, A single prime? Is it homotopic, enantiotopic or diastereotopic? So, do the same substitution test and you can see by substituting one uh, H with Br, you are getting the enantiomer here, right? Which is a mirror image of each other. So if you are generating the enantiomer, non-superimposable mirror image, so we can say HA and HA single prime are enantiotopic protons. And we know enantiotopic protons, NMR cannot distinguish. So you will get only one signal for this. Therefore, we are getting two signals for ethyl chloride in proton NMR. Okay, now this molecule you can easily say now without solving it, you have a stereocenter present here and they are asking the relationship between the two protons. Just now we have seen if you have the stereocenter in the molecule, already a chiral molecule, then the two should be diastereotopic proton with each other. And so by substitution test, it will generate the diastereomers. And that also you can confirm by doing the RS nomenclature. Now, if you have a geometrical isomers with respect to the double bond and they are asking you, we know that CH3 and this CH will give a different peak. Now, you have CH2 here. So, this CH2, whether the HA and HB are the identical protons, homotopic or enantiotopic or diastereotopic. For that, again, we'll do the substitution test. Let's replace one of the hydrogen with Br and see. Now, you can notice the relationship between hydrogen and methyl. The two are trans to each other in first case. In other case, it is cis to each other. And so, we can say that it is a non-mirror image or you can say it is superimposable images. So, if it is superimposable, then we can say the two protons are diastereotropic protons. Because if it is non-superimposable image, then we can say it is the enantiomers. And then... Enantiomers means enantiotopic protons, but it is a superimposable cis and trans geometrical isomerism. If you are getting, that means it is a diastereotropic protons or diastereotropic groups or diastereomers. These two are called the diastereomers of each other. And so HA and HB will give a different signal and will split with each other. So total four signal you will get for that molecule. In this molecule, it is very easy. The two methyls, you can see it is equivalent because it is in the same chemical environment. And similarly, the CH2, the two protons, if you see the molecule is symmetrical. So the two hydrogens are homotopic to each other. So you can say the molecule is homotopic, either the two CH3 or the two hydrogen of the CH2. Homotopic molecule. In this case as well, you can see we will get the two signals because the molecule is very symmetrical. The two methyls are in the same environment. The above the plane methyl is in the environment of hydrogen. Similarly, the below the plane methyl is in the environment of hydrogen. So we can say the two methyls are identical and similarly we can say for this CH2, the two are identical or homotopic group. And so we can solve such kind of problems where you have to distinguish homotopic, enantiotopic, diastereotopic protons. I hope you understood it. Happy learning.